Hey there team. So this is going to be a super quick video, but it's just after my uh, my last one right there. Uh, this this little match popped up into my head again. And I just sort of wanted to go through it and really get some thoughts on whether the... Or whether or not the kind of unusual strategies uh, shown by my, my adversary here uh, could actually be used in a more competitive fashion. So I'm playing as Rudauer, um, standard sort of army, I, yeah I guess it matters, I'll, I'll go through my army real quick. So Rudauer marksmen of course, Rudauer clansmen behind them, uh, axemen there, a mixture of axemen and swordsmen, two of each, and then Herenidine pikes with two Dunman pikes. I've got my Colfell maidens, two units of Colfell maidens today, no other cav. I'm going really deep into the just melee cavalry strategy recently. I'm, my micro abilities are just fading from me, it's silly. Um, I think I'm getting better at the game, but I'm getting worse at controlling units of cav, it seems. So, um, two Emo Troll Hunters, of course, Enslavers, and there's the other Coldfell Maidens, and then my Herendine Berserkers, I've got my General in there. And that is that Black Wolves too. Shoved in a unit of Black Wolves, why not? Got Critch here, this was one of our little 2v2s we've done recently. Uh, he's playing Zisengard, he's got his Ballista. Uh, Clansmen, some pikes there. A unit of Borg Riders. Yeah, just A unit. And then the champions of the White Hand there. Dun Landing Clansmen. Uh, Urukai Raiders. Back in normal speed, actually. Urukai Raiders. Uh, Urukai Archers. And uh, yeah, that is a uh, Berserkers too. Any armor upgrade for them? No, no armor upgrade for the Berserkers. Fair enough. Ah, oh, these guys have been lucky enough to get an armor upgrade though. And then the Naz High, and that's where he's got his general today. Yes, yes, it is. Not, it's not. I don't know. Oh, champions of the White Hand, maybe. Yeah, that's probably where he's put him. Yes. I think that's... I actually have no idea. I think that's his general. But, oh well. Uh, it doesn't matter anyway too much. Uh, this is a... This is more just an explanation. You'll see immediately as soon as things kick off, but... It's, uh, you can see from Critch's army here, or Bane Guard, of course, a lot of power is in these pikes, and uh, I guess the Bane Guard too. And, uh, apart, yeah, mainly that's his, his primary killing power, I would say. The Dunlending Clansmen and Berserkers are kind of there as just additionals. Urukai Infantry just there to tie things up, and of course the Ballista. But what I'm getting at is just about all of his real killing power is made up of unshielded units. Heavily armoured, as the Urukai may be, but unshielded all the same. And uh, that is why I think that some slight modifications to uh, to one of my enemy's armies here could have made this pretty devastating for us, even though it was quite devastating anyway. Um, kind of thought they deployed a bit faster. But yeah, so as I say, it was just the um, slightly unusual situation of um a Lamao's army with its triple nazgul's so as you can see we'll jump right across to it we've got he has spoken is coming in today with five uh dun dunedain rangers that's you know one two three that's where he's general three four and yeah that's five definitely yeah cool because they kind of merged into one there so that's a lot of money deep into the red limit you go into the red limit after one of course so that is his entire funding spent into getting those five rangers and then his ally here joxam has gone for arthur dane with his two arthur dane marksmen up there some forest Aaron knights and defenders dismounted knights of course uh evendom archers some arthur dane pikes and men at arms mixed up together very very powerful front line there even without any armor upgrades Dismounted Knights of Anuminous, and that is that really. Uh, Arthenade Sergeants, two units of Arth. Oh no, no, one unit there. Dunedain Mounted Company, Dunedain Scouts, and over here, another unit. I knew there were two, another unit of Arthenade Sergeants. So, kind of takes us by surprise right off the bat. And uh, we just decided to come rushing on forward. So, there's as, as even with my cav i can rush over as fast as i can he was clever enough to sort of deploy toward the back of his lines just so that he would have enough time to to lurch into his ally now this is what i was kind of mentioning in the previous one when you're taking a kind of unusual army build you really need to to work alongside your allies like this so this is smart coming in and, and sort of going in behind his ally 
And we knew that, yeah, this could actually be bloody curtains if they if they play their cards right. Because uh, you'll see in a minute, Arthur Dane even has brought his unit of Dunedain Rangers as they popped up there. So all, all in all, that's six units of body piercing archers. And even, sorry, Grey Company as well. So there's seven body piercing units uh, brought today, which can really eviscerate us. So I, of course, zone in on those Grey Company with my uh, with my maidens. Maidens are taking a fair bit of firepower, but it's a case of, like, I would much rather my maidens take these shots rather than my Dunman Pikes uh, later on in the battle. So if, uh, if it is their job to just take these shots, then that's, that's what they've got to do. But um, we'll see as... Critch is advancing forward as I say it's it's got to just be a very sort of quick movement here gets his men out of uh, phalanx formation is just sort of rushing them on up get the Isengard Ballista of course you know we can just sort of pound them away now of course we, what we could have done here is just held back and just hit them with the Isengard Ballista you know that but that wasn't really that would just be a bit cheeky in my mind you know when somebody sort of done something like this uh, i i can see why a lot of people would maybe be just want to punish them for it but no we kind of thought no let's let's get stuck in and a lot of arrows are going to be coming forward because these are two militia archers and uh, then two good quality arthurdane marksmen there in front of them it's um a lot of arrow fire coming forward for for these poor pikemen and uh, as I said before, you know, a lot of these units are just unshielded. These Urukai archers are not really going to be able to stand up to stand up to this. But um, he's spreading his units out quite nice and long. But as I say, they, they could do being in um, a spread formation. The Dunlending Berserkers are going to be taking a pounding too. So what we could generally... Because I was wondering what he was generally targeting here. So he's got all of his units, all five units are firing at once here. Some of them are firing straight up, which is, of course, just removing their efficiency. But most of them, the vast majority, are firing properly. And you're seeing these Urukai are just disappearing. Urukai archers are taking a fair bit of that fire. Like I see, he needs to switch focus to these guys. Victory will be ours. I see, I, well, yeah, because this is, this is me examining this situation. Then I'll, I'll talk a bit about some stuff after the, after the battle. Because um, I am always interested when people bring something a bit strange. I love people trying to break the meta. I think that of course this was this wasn't this was a meme. This wasn't uh, made in an attempt to to be competitive. But um, so it's always quite just cool to see you know how close you can really get. So already just firing at will uh, willy nilly. Uh, like this he has kind of gone through quite a lot of his ammo but he has been just deleting these forces even the snaga will just fall apart to that so of course in this situation when you outnumber the enemy in this in this such a grand fashion i'm just going to be deploying my entire army on his flank and just swallowing him forward so when you when you have you five units to command like i'm i'm very bad at making sure that my archers are shooting at the right targets that's always just something that i've been bad at so, but I just don't think necessarily he's uh, got too many excuses for for not picking great targets. But I'm not disagreeing with any of his targets right now. I just think it's um, going to bump up to balance. I'm seeing a few uh, few jumps there. So, but uh, that's just the amount of body piercing fire that's going on. I suppose it's causing that. Cheaper sick. I might end up crashing. <laughs> crashing from a two v two would be uh, terribly upsetting. So we collide, and you can see the amount of damage that Isengard has been going through here from this charge. It's, um, he is just bouncing off what is a very, very small front line. And arguably, I mean, quite an expensive front line, but not a massive one. You know, it's, uh, Isengard under a normal circumstance would be barreling right through this. But it is because of the amount of damage that he's taken from all of these archers and rangers that, um, that yeah, he's falling away. But, and I think the main issue here is just that there was nothing in front of me. Like, you can see I'm just getting through now. And these men have taken an absolute beating incredibly quickly, those poor axemen. But, uh, yeah, that's these guys here. 
but there's nothing in my way, so I can just lurch forward, and once the formation breaks, once they start scattering out, that's it over. So, um, I'll just settle here on, uh, on two times speed. And, yeah, it's, it was cool. Um, of course, at the time, we were pretty just, ugh, you know, that's a bit annoying. When you get in and, you know, because, uh, trying to be sort of semi-competitive you, you, you can't take a, you can't take a game too seriously because at the at the end of the day it's it's a game you're playing it for fun but um when you do launch up and you see somebody that's uh chosen something a bit silly you you do automatically lose energy but um when i when i started to see it i thought maybe this could actually work and uh, that was really why i wanted to examine this battle a bit and I guess is, um, as well, just sort of to ask, could this have worked? I won't be putting any music on this video or anything like that, because this is more just a general, a general overview uh, of a very short battle. But, if we continue yeah, like so this, we I, I think that three, uh, three rangers is maybe the most you can, you can get away with. Because, say if he had brought three rangers... The enemy general flees like the and then just poured of the enemy all of that money because by that point well, these these red so limit rangers would be costing him like three grand so if he had just taken all that money and poured it into militia spears you know the the uh, the greenway garrison spears and the footmen too you know um just anything not so much to get kills but as i say because when i'm coming in from the right flank and just barreling right through him you know, like, what What did they end up racking up? It's like 51% of us for that. Like, that's quite a lot. <laughs> that's uh, that's certainly not a bad showing. But I think I think if you're going to do that in a 2v2, what you would need to... I'm, I'm, I'm not putting this to the test, by the way. Uh, so, But what you would need to do is max out at, say, three rangers. And then, say, Arthur Dane could have taken uh, two units of rangers and his grey company so that avoids him going head over heels dale is just playing ultimate chicken horse over and over again he's popped it like four times there um sorry uh so yeah then he's not going head over heels into the red limit and you saw that simple but simple not overly expensive but powerful front line was just able to hold us in place so you know together they could have made another one of those to face off against me. Um, and yeah, I, I genuinely think that something like this could work. Uh, but as I say, it's, it, I find it's something you saw a lot more on 9-6. Uh, people taking kind of really weird compositions. I remember there was one battle I was up against... Bacon Fish? Um, I think it was Bacon Fish. And he brought, he was playing his Gondor and he took a Ballista, a Trebuchet and a Catapult to face off against me. That was not a fun battle. That was a 3v3. Um, but yeah, and the kills, the kill, like that was a thousand kills. He racked up very quickly with, with those units. Um, but yeah, it, I'll have a quick glance over my kills if anybody wants to see, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to run through them because uh, it's just sort of units getting torn apart by arrow fire. And then catching prisoners. Uh, but all in all, yeah, so that's, um, that was just sort of to highlight, like, kind of crazy strategy. And um, as I say, I, I, I used to see a lot more of that, and I, I don't see so much of that now. And um, Like, with with the Mimikill, you go into the red limit now after one Mimikill, and it's seven grand, seven seven thousand two hundred uh, to get your second Mimikill. Whereas back in 9-6, there were compositions where people were taking three Mimikill to a fight. Now, genuinely, it didn't work, but it was still an option to us. And um, as I say, I don't, I don't think it's a mistake to do that. I, I, I never really, uh, I would never say that. But it's, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that though that's stopping people from doing kind of crazy stuff now. Um, so yeah, no, like I, I like, I like to see kind of kind of silly compositions and see if they if if they can work um but of course don't do it like with with joxam and he has spoken they they know each other they were their friends so like that's fine they they knew they had chatted about that but don't jump don't jump into a 3v3 and then say oh guys i'm gonna take f four witchers and see how this goes you know but um yeah it's 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 nice
that uh, that people are testing this stuff out and I think that that was close to working. I do genuinely think that that could have worked. Especially up against some newer guys maybe. But um but no or or up against sort of a bit, bit you know if you panicked a bit more but we we kind of saw that and we immediately acted which was uh, which was good. But yeah, anyway, um as I say I'm just wanting to pump out a lot of videos. Get a, I saved this replay just because it was a bit of a meme. Uh so I, I just want to clear out my replay folder. So getting getting a bunch of videos done if I can. Right. Thanks guys.